Hey everyone, this is High Cell here, and welcome to E1 of the 2016 Spring Event. And this event, so far, it's looking like it's gonna be Hell Incarnate. Just looking at E6 and E7, which devs just recently said they fucked up with, and that uh, don't try it. But who knows what's gonna change? But for now, E6 and E7 is a long way away. It's worth do about to start E1. And E1 Hard is... Honestly, it's harder than previous E1s, but it is ultimately still E1, and nobody should have any problems with it. What problems that could come out because of E1 though, is because ship locking, and E1 does have ship locking. E1 locks your ship to the blue color. And there are four different colors. You got blue, you got green, you got orange, and you got yellow. Blue is E1 and E4, so everybody here, you can also take on E4. Green is E2, E3, E5 has orange, and then E6 is yellow. E7 has no ship locking though, so that's one good thing. And look, and I believe E5 is sort of optional, as in maybe completely optional, as in you don't need it to be E5 to do E6, and at the time of where E6 is harder than probably the devs intended because of some sort of bug or something, E5 does not appear to have any effect on E6. But okay, but now we've covered the basics of the event um, overall. So talking about E1, E1 is Fairly simple, um, ranching rules, uh, um, doesn't really, um, not much really matters um, at the moment because you generally, the only real, real fleet that you're gonna bring is probably gonna take the same route as the wiki recommends. So, they recommend one seal and five destroyers and an escort fleet because presumably that leads to, um, from B to to D, which you are about to see in a few moments here, and then everything afterwards is active branching or line of sight check. The only real potential branching rule is if you go from B to D or B to A, and supposedly a CLT will bring you to B to A, but with ship locking, you generally try to afford using a CLT unless you can, um, unless you don't have a choice because it's everything is hard. But other than that. Unfortunate. So let's see. Main fleet, we've got two um, light carriers, two battleships, and two heavy cruisers. All fast, so you got fast battleships, and you also gotta get fast light carriers. Not all light carriers are fast, and not all light carriers are slow. Um, Junyo and Kyu are slow. I'm not sure about. I'm fairly sure Suho is fast. I'm not sure about Shoho. Because I don't use Suho or Shoho, which could potentially you add me, because having more light carriers, body ship locks might not be the baddest idea, because you can't just bring standard carriers for everything, because at this moment, I think I can safely say I have more battle ready standard carriers than. Yeah. So, you can see here, this node. Kinda screwed me over this time, but generally, this node is not a problem at all. Because it's, it's two battleships, you know, you can't, you saw me get unlucky there, but that was actually the only time I've gotten unlucky. So, the first um, D node is one of the nodes, I would say. 90% of the times you'll make it through because that's a different it's a variety of combinations, but generally the battleships are the only threat. Heavy cruisers are moderate threat, but generally they're not gonna really one-shot anyone unless you get really unlucky. So they're generally not a big problem at all. So it's no just simple, you got you know standard E1. Generally, with a surface fleet, as, um, as you mentioned earlier, is 
their enemies are gonna be dead before they can even attack your escort fleet. So your escort fleet should probably be fine here as well, so it doesn't really matter who you have in your escort fleet. So there are some formations that can have a light carrier, so for that you um, do want to bring some fighters along. So you don't really need a lot of fighters, because all you need for air superiority on this node if you get a light carrier is 35 air superiority. Air supremacy is um, 69. So on the pre-boss node, one potential formation, which I I think I've only seen once, does have um, Yorktan, the um, aircraft team. I'm not sure which one was it. Uh, she, you need more fighters for that to gain air superior 159. So you can accomplish that with just some, um, believe, uh, two fighters, like um, both your right the Rekukai and the um, one of the special Isle squadron, and you got just enough for air superior on that node. So afterward, other than that though, that's um, on the next node. I'll talk more about the pre-boss node once we actually get there, but for now let's talk about the node that comes before the pre-boss node. Also, active branching, I do not see any reason why you would ever go to F and I. There doesn't appear to be any benefit at all. F. There doesn't seem to be any yeah, on the English Ian wiki, this is not even, nobody even put what enemies are in F and I because you have no reason to go to F and I, but the node before the pre-boss node on the ideal route is a submarine node, which seems to be 90, 100, I mean, supposedly they can be in the echelon formation according to the wiki, but I think I've only seen them in line of breast. So, but either way, they are going to have a really hard time of hitting you in line of breast. And even then, you have fleet command facility, so the chances of them forcing you to retreat are even less. So a submarine node, like the second node, you have to get really unlucky You have to retreat here. I mean, think about it. To get forced to retreat here, they either somehow duck all your destroyers in the medium damage or knocks two of your destroyers to heavy damage and remember second fleet escort cannot sink even in heavy damage so she's always safe so it's very unlikely there because it's submarine they don't get much attacks in the first place and are already inaccurate the second note arguably is a better chance to knock you out because you got battleships there they just gotta get two lucky hits in and they gonna get two challenge phases in because they're battleships. So yeah, no D. Arguably, well, probably you can, it's very easy to say that no D is a harder node, but both of them, no problem. And first node, no problem either. The only threat that you should ever encounter, unless you are really, really, really a lucky person, is this pre-boss node. This pre-boss node, you're most likely going to CC in this formation, which could also be line ahead for the same, um, same ships, same girls. You got the battleship Hime, who is the biggest threat, because of obvious reasons, because she's gonna, she has the potential to one-shot everybody. Green tea is arguably a good thing, because then, you know, you do, let's say, 90 damage when they have 89 HP. That's probably going to get reduced to, like, something like medium damage versus, you know, something that's knocking just barely the red. So, yeah. This node is your biggest threat. Because the Bowser Hime is going to probably get three shots in. And, you know, you got two other battleships, two, two root classes. You got the, um, every cruiser and class. Heavy Cruiser, and all of all three of those, all four, including the actual battleship he made, are potential for the Heavy Cruiser in there. She's less of a threat, but she can make the difference between orange and red sometimes. Because of, you know, it's literally a one damage difference between orange and red. So you can get lucky there. And the battleship he made is most likely, because you're not that likely to sink her, you'll get three shots in. The two shelling phases against your main fleet and one shot against your escort fleet. So it's only you only have to get two people in red to force a retreat with fleet by um, facility. So this is going to be the major source of your retreats. But other than that, 
this node is ultimately not that bad. Though it is pretty annoying because this is only E1 and you do not expect to see this stuff in E1. Now I've seen, I've seen, it only gets, it's arguably only gets worse from here. Maybe there's a fear, you know, back uh, some nice, I'm not sure how you describe it, downhill slopes. But then you're gonna go, goes back uphill from there. And maybe it's a fear back down, but then not more uphill. But then, after, um, then there is, as uh, mentioned before, potentially the, another formation guess you can get the Yorktown, i.e. the carrier he may with this. And with her, you've got one Rue class battleship and two Su class light cruisers, and then you got um Rue class destroyers, and that's just standard. You want to bring at least two fighters on your biggest slots, uh, ideally max level. And then you should be able to get through that Nova Fair Superior and just fine. But I mean, aircraft Hime herself is kind of like the battleship Hime, but um, I would say she's not as bad. Mainly, ultimately, that um, formation might be easier. Though it is, honest, it is the second hardest possible thing you can encounter because all the other nodes are piss easy. And then you can see the boss. Boss, I got two uh, um, patrol um, boats, torpedo imps, and they, they're not that big of a threat. The boss in total, not hard at all. You can take them down in the, the main fleet alone. Escar fleet, sometimes you wonder why is the Escar fleet here? They don't do much, other than fleet command facility to get you through the free boss node. Also here, how uh, you know, I didn't actually, I didn't actually realize that a battleship fully equipped with only main guns and no secondary guns can still hit the um, uh, torpedo boat. I had pretty, I had mistakenly assumed that you have to have a secondary gun to hit. I didn't realize it was just a low chance. I assumed it was a zero chance percent chance, but clearly it's not a zero percent chance to hit them. It's a low percent chance to hit them. That's the boss node. The final boss node, final formation, doesn't change much. Overall, you have to kill the boss five times. You're gonna kill the boss every time, so you just gotta have to pretty much reach the boss five times. If you don't reach, if you can't kill the boss when you reach her, you probably have bigger problems with the rear boat. I mean, let's look at the lower difficulty. Let's see, medium, if I can see it. Apparently not, because of. The um, whatever the script in here is broken or something, I had to refresh. There we go again, load medium, see medium. Well, medium it's uh fairly similar. Medium you do not have the battleship Hime though. So it's pre boss is even easier. And then once I can get if I can get easy to load to see what how easy easy actually is. Pre boss node um looks like uh, kind of like medium boss node eh same practically the same thing i mean it's not the same thing but it's not like hard is that hard in the first place so yeah and honestly there's really no reason not to do hard unless you're really somehow suffering from some sort of problem that you can't do hard, I'm not sure what sort of excuses you can make up, but you will want to do hard because there is one major reward that you get on hard that you do not get on medium. Daihatsu class landing craft, the landing boats that previously you will use to get more resources. What well, we've seen in the past few updates, we've been seeing uh, um, two different ver extra versions of their Sort of one extra version, I guess, something that's technically completely different. So we got the landing craft, the landing boat, with marines and a tank, and then you got a completely bigger tank itself, which is the, I guess, final form. And how it gets you the um form that has the um Type 89 medium tanks and marines, which makes installation battles or yeah, installation battles. I don't think it. I've heard some stuff about uh, coastal coastal. Guns versus installations and some other stuff. We'll, I'll figure out the mechanics there later, because we'll be dealing with that 
You need two, I believe. But yeah, you will want that stronger Daihatsu boat. I mean, ideally, I would have enough screws to turn into a tank. Unfortunately, I do not have enough screws. I have enough barrels and a, um extra meat um guns and uh, um, whatever the requirements are you have enough barrels to still do the expeditions that need eight barrels to upgrade what a Daihatsu to the one of the marines and then upgrade that to a tank for theoretically two tanks but I lack the screws completely and I didn't have the quest prerequisites to do the quest to unlock the tank so let it be a lesson to you you should arguably play the game more and do those quests and all right cruising you know what just do it who cares about people saying it's cruelty it's it's ultimately a job they joined in the, during the navy they have a job to do they go and go on our cruising to get those quests complete so you can get those arguably necessary requirements to do other quests which you can already cruise for those then you can get the um, weapons and stuff that you need from those quests and screws as well screws you know they're also very important it turns out because practically everything now is based on you having lots of screws to improve shit unfortunately no longer can you depend upon the base weapons with just good stats now you gotta upgrade them and then with the fit guns and everything, things have changed, and I honestly have not adapted. If I had to think of an analogy, random spot, I would think, uh, you know, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, I would be kind of like the old nobility of the Galactic Empire who refuses to change, and all like that blonde rat. Kind of. Of course, I'm, I'm clearly here, I realize that I do need to change. And I need to actually start. Playing more actively? Unfortunately, this is arguably not the time. Best time for me for this because I'm on the co op term right now. That means a 9 to 5 job with a fairly long commute. So, completing E1 this fast is arguably a miracle in itself because usually I don't do this. I don't do it. I don't play the events like this. I like to wait a few days for more information. But with 7 maps, so arguably the event already got extended to like three weeks. It could get extended even more when you think about it with what we ha what's ha been happening recently. So, but arguably, I will be trying to do as much as I can on my when I get home on the weekdays, and then trying to boom do as much as possible on the weekend. So, this event it's really gonna be a tough one for me, even though I have max resources. I clearly did not do what the preparations I should have done. But hopefully, I can at least be E7 on hard. E6, well, depending on how the devs supposedly fucked up E6, that could be either medium or hard. The other maps, they too could be medium. But ideally, I like to do everything on a hard. But it's part. You gotta put your pride behind you and do whatever it takes to be different. You get Iowa. And ideally get a hard medal. Cause E7 will be the only one you have to do a hard and you know no one's gonna no one's gonna know you did the other maps on medium. Or even so uneasy. If nobody notices. Cause there's no way for them to notice. Because they just see oh you have all the hard medals, that must mean you did it hard, right? Wrong. But they won't know. Yeah, we see the same formation. Don't don't show your can at all, unfortunately. But you know, it's not really any difference. I mean, it's why Shigure and and um, Atsuharu has arrow cutting um, for, um, equipment, and they're also my best guns because they're the only um, 10 centimeter with um, gun fire control that I have actually improved at all. So yeah, and, also, and then I have a bunch of uh, maxed out 12.7 um, centimeter guns because they are really easy to improve because they cost one screw and uh, you get one screw a day pretty much for free, so it evens out.
<laughs> but yeah. So, uh, pretty much gonna be finishing off E1 in approximately 4, 3, 5 minutes. So, there's really not any other recommended um, fleet compositions uh, at the moment. Just two uh, fast light carriers, two fast battleships, two heavy cruisers, and then one light cruiser and five destroyers. Really not any sort of form of deviation. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't need two uh, light carriers. Maybe you want to bring maybe a third heavy cruiser or something like that. Uh, maybe that, I think the main fleet has some potential deviations you can make there in case you want to in case you have to in case you want to have maybe more light carriers for another ship lock so you have to also plan for E4 because anybody you're gonna use for E4 you may as well use for E1 so arguably this is a event that you ideally would have would have been best to wait a few days and wait for people to gather information because then you can plan all the ship lock in the head of time and then you can also, in your spare time, actually do some quests to, if you haven't already, to try and unlock the um, tank from the quest, which I'm probably not going to be able to do, unfortunately. And any other quests that may unlock anything special, and I can't think of any at the moment that I haven't done yet. Oh yeah, or recruits and screws as well, always a good thing. So you might do that, so you can, you know, while waiting for information and know the devs to fix things. But yeah. Final form, you can tell us really not much different than non final form. Destroyers are different. There's the high class destroyers versus the broad class destroyers, but they're still destroyers and ultimately not a threat at all. So the main fleet didn't get to kill the boss. So I got, got the pillar boss. They boss. It's really it's just it's a completely ordinary high class battleship. And that is E1 for you. I've already mentioned the main reward is the um, Daihatsu um, land boats. Uh, how I just do the one with the tanks and marines. Not the uh, one afterwards, which is just uh, some tank. And then the other ones just give you a normal Daihatsu. Uh, and um, other rewards. So easy. On, okay, all difficulties you get a Mamiya. On easy, you get one battle ration. On medium, you get two ma battle rushes and a uh, Ilico. On hard, you get the same thing, except with the better Daihatsu. So, same as medium, but better Daihatsu, which is arguably very important. So that's effectively E1 in a nutshell. If there's any other mechanics I've missed, well, there is one mechanic that we were not gonna see for, I think, until E4, but this event does introduce land-based aircraft for the player, which, I like I said, I don't believe we'll be seeing uh, use of them until E4, and I think they were bugged. I'm not sure if it has been fixed, but they were bugged at one point, so this has been E1, looks like it costs about maybe 5,000, like, less than 5,000 resources, a few screws here and there. Because I was rushing. Ideally, if you don't rush, you take E1 slowly and let repairs naturally. You're probably gonna actually gain resources and maybe go e and oh, arguably, obviously, gain buckets because you're not using any. So yeah. So this was E1 of the Spring 2016 event. Yeah, um, there's no, doesn't look. There is a name for the, well, sort of a name for the operation. Not really. It's a, it's a what if operation, but it's also called Deployment Land Based Aerial Division. But I'm not going to use that for the name because that's a mouthful. So this has been E1 of the Spring 2016 Defense so far. And I'll see you guys for E2, which is going to probably take a lot more time to beat. I'll see you guys then. And good night. <laughs>